As I stand before you tonight, we are on the brink of victory. Our policies are clear. Our policies are just. Our policies are fully laid out in my book with the England price fee and sixpence for all good booksellers. Our policies are, one, the right, nay, the duty of every free-born Englishman to grow his own potatoes. <laughs> two, an immediate ban on the import of foreign root vegetables into the United Kingdom. <laughs> and three, the compulsory scientific measurement of all adult male knees. <laughs> Not for the true-born Englishman, the bony, angular knee, or the so-called intellectual. Not for him, the puffy knee of the criminal classes. The British knee is firm. The British knee is muscular. The British knee is on the march! <laughs> Excellent. A dozen new recruits to the cause. Oh, that's good, uh, isn't it? I'm sorry you weren't there, Watkin. One had hoped that one's best friends would support one in the task of rebuilding Britain. Yes, yes, I'm sorry too. Midnight for cataloguing the silver collection. Your collection cannot control your life, Watkin. You must come with me next Thursday when I dress the Eagle Battalion at Minchin Hampton. Yes, uh, yes, uh, very possibly. I shall now retire. <laughs> we have to catch the 9.30 tomorrow, remember? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> good night, Stephanie. Good night. Good night, little Madeline. Good night. His knees. <laughs> is a happy occasion. Yeah. Eh? Uh, old Gussie getting engaged. <laughs> uh, still, I expect he knows what he's doing. Uh, no, but uh, a good egg, Gussie, as we all know, and uh, a persuasive man with a newt. <laughs> uh, no, what I've always said is that uh, Gussie and Madeline are made for each other, really, uh, like kippers and marmalade. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sure we all wish them many happy years together over the newt. Uh, so, Gussie and Madeline. Gussie and Madeline. <laughs> Jeeves, a most satisfactory binge last night. I'm delighted to hear so, sir. Was Mr. Finknottle in good spirits? <laughs> Poor devil. The sands are running out for Gussie Finknottle, Jeeves. He will shortly have Sir Watkin Bassett as a father-in-law. He's the blighter who fined me five pounds for pinching a policeman's helmet. Perhaps Sir Watkin is not so formidable in private life, sir. I doubt it, Jeeves. Slice him where you like. A hellhound is always a hellhound. Is that the papers you've got there? No, sir. It is some literature from the Round the World Cruise Bureau. I thought you might care to glance at it. Jeeves, this nuisance must now cease. Travel is highly educational, sir. I, I cannot do with any more education, Jeeves. I was full up years ago. Now it's that old Viking strain of yours coming out again. You yearn for the tang of salt breezes. You see yourself walking the decks in a yachting cap. Possibly someone has been telling you about the dancing girls of Bali. I understand and I sympathise, but not for me. Now I refuse to be decanted into some blasted ocean-going liar and lugged off round the world. Very good, sir. You must understand, Jeeves, that when two men of iron will live in close association with one another, there are bound to be occasional clashes. Very good, sir. Yeah, very well. well. We'll say no more about it. Uh, any letters today? Uh, no, sir. One telephone communication, however, from Mrs. Travers. She will be coming to visit us directly. Oh? I wonder what you... <laughs> Awake yet? Ah, what's there, I want you to go to an antique shop in Bond Street and sneer at a cow creamer. Do what or what? It's silver. A sort of 18th century cream jug in the shape of a cow. Well, sounds dashed unpleasant to me. Oh, it doesn't matter what it sounds like to you, young Bertie. Your Uncle Tom thinks it's the cat's nightwear. It's the only one left in the country, apparently. Go there, ask them to show it to you, 
And when they do register scorn, this will sow doubts and misgivings in their minds and make them tip the price a bit. But Uncle Tom's been having a bad time lately with his collection. Everything he's tried to buy, that bastard Watkin Bassett, has pipped him at the post. If he can get this thing cheaply, it may save him from an early grave. <clears throat> you have one of your wonderful ideas, Jeeves. If Mr. Worcester, while sneering, could imply that the object is probably of modern Dutch manufacture, the vendor might be the more inclined to lower his ambitions. Why Dutch? The Dutch, sir, while an admirable people in many ways and renowned for their domestic hygiene, are not considered to be of the first rank in matters of Argentine craftsmanship. Well, you heard what Jeeves said. Now, run along and sneer. I don't think so. I've got another very like this. You've got one of everything, I should think, in that blasted collection of yours. How about this very rare Georgian teapot, sir? Morning! Oh, I'll be with you in a moment, sir. Hello, Fox. Do you, you young man? Uh, no, no. Uh, you came up before me once, but not twice. Well, Good. Going straight, eh? Hey? Now, uh, let me think. What was it? Um, of course, yes, bag snatching. No, no. Still it... all over and done with now, eh? Splendid. Roderick, come over here. Hello. Look at him. I gave him three months not long ago for snatching bags at railway stations. Uh, it's quite evident. His term in jail has had an excellent effect on him. Uh, uh, quite reformed. <laughs> Here's a shilling. Don't spend it on drink. Spend it on drink? <laughs> oh, left the gentleman born. Yes, yes, they're gone, yes. Um, where was I? Oh, yes, I, uh, I understand you have an 18th century cow creamer for sale. Oh, you're too late. I'm afraid it promised to a customer. Uh, name of Travers? Ah, well, that's all right, then. The above Travers is my uncle. He sent me along to have a look at the thing. Oh, right. I expect it's absolutely rotten. It's a beautiful cow creamer. Oh, dear. What? No, 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 no. No, no, this one, no, it's all modern Dutch. Modern Dutch? What do you mean? Have a look at the oil mark. No, 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 no. Here. I can't see any hallmark. Are you blind? Take it out in the street. Have a look at it in the lake. Oh, dear, the phone again. <laughs> ah, smash and grab that, by God! This is the sort of thing that makes one sick at heart, Smooth. No, 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 if, you, if you'll just let me explain. Ah, explain, call the police, Smooth. No, 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 you don't understand. I, I understand far too well. <laughs> Oh, no. Switzerland. Mrs. Travers will be most disappointed, sir. Mrs. Travers will be boiling anyway, Jeeves, if she's found out how miserably I fail with that dratted milk jug. Good morning, Mrs. Travers. Mr. Worcester asked me to say that he's gone to Switzerland. Oh, piffle, Jeeves, get the blighter out of bed. Very good, madam. Mrs. Travers, sir. Oh, I thought I told you to... I'm afraid she seemed disinclined to believe me, sir. But I, I can't face her, Jeeves. Courage mounteth with the occasion, sir. But it didn't mounteth with me, Jeeves, on the occasion of coming face to face with my rape aunt. You know that cow creamer I asked you to sneer at yesterday? Ah, well, yes, as a matter of fact, I was. I was did you to... sneer? I did. I did. Well, your sneers were wasted. That unmitigated hound Bassett has bought it. He went to the shop and told the shopkeeper that Tom had sent him. Well, well, well. 
Is that all you can say? Well, well, well. Well? Oh, do stop it. If I ever catch the idiot who told Watkin of the thing's existence, I shall not be responsible for my actions. Oh, I think you should be too severe, Aunt Elia. Oh, I shall not be severe. I shall be just. When I find out who it was, I shall sever his head from his shoulders. You would bet, I hope, that by every moral law, that cow creamer belongs to Tom. Emphatically. And that if Tom finds out that Watkin blasted Bassett has got it, he'll probably sink into a dreadful attitude and take no further interest in life. If you say so, hold flesh and blood. Good. Because you're going to steal it back for me. I don't care how spiritual a Harold Pinker is, Madeline. I'm Stephanie's guardian. You only play cricket for Oxford. I don't care if you play till you into the sore bomb. It's bad enough you and his new fancy you've got coming down. I'm not having her marry some old big curate. Harold is not half bait, Uncle Watty. Perhaps someone left the oven door open. <laughs> I don't want to hear another word about this, Stephanie. He won't always be a curate either. Good. When he's Archbishop of Canterbury, he can ask you to marry him. <laughs> It's no good, Stiffy. Sir Watkin will never allow you to throw yourself away on a penniless curate. Oh, you are wet sometimes, Harold. We've just got to convince him that you're the stuff our bishops are made of. All right. I shall be dignified. I shall be urbane. You could just not trip over the furniture at this start. Come on. There's the gong. Come along, Bartholomew. <laughs> Under the new order, the whole of Wales and Scotland will be given over to the production of the potato. Nothing but potatoes? Nothing but potatoes. Just as Gloucestershire will be entirely laid down to turnips and Wiltshire to beans. <laughs> Rationalisation is the order of the day. Now, Warwickshire will manufacture umbrellas and shooting sticks and Norfolk because of its distinctive topography, motor cars. <laughs> I don't quite see that, Spurred. <laughs> it has all been scientifically worked out, I assure you. Sorry, I'm late, Walkin. Uh, I've just been arranging my tanks. Tanks? Yes, my newt tanks. Mr. Fingernottle breeds newt. When Augustus and I are married, I'm going to learn all about newt. Married? Augustus and I are getting married. Little Madeline? Married? To him? Madeline? Gussie, could you help? I don't know. I've got something in my eye, a fly or something. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Won't you have a look over there at the light? Mm. Gussie! Oh, hello, Madeline. Ah. Telegram for Mr. Worcester. Thank you, Mr. Jarvis. Telegram for you, Sam. Oh, yes, uh, you better read it, Jeeves. Very good, Sam. <clears throat> come immediately. Serious rift, Madeline and self. Unless you come earliest possible moment, prepared, lend every effort, reconciliation, wedding will be broken off. Reply, Gussie, Sam. Ah, oh, well, these are deep waters, Jeeves. There's only one thing we can say with any certainty, and that is that Gussie has made an ass of himself again. There is that possibility, sir. Mm. Have you got your telegraph pad handy? Yes, sir. Right, well, send this. <clears throat> Think not all. Totley Towers, Totley in the world, Gloucestershire. Yes, that's all very well. You say, come here immediately, but how Dickens can I? Relations between Pop Bassett and self, not such as to make him welcome Bertram. Would hurl out on ear and set dogs on. What serious rift? Why serious rift? Why Dickens? What have you been doing to the girl? Reply, Bertie. <clears throat> Forgive me for mentioning it, sir, but am I not right in thinking that should the rift between Mr. Finknottle and Miss Bassett not be healed, Miss Bassett may well raise her sights and regard you as a matrimonial prospect once again? Good Lord, Jeeves, you're absolutely right. Well, we shall have to go down to Totley in person. Send a telegram cancelling that last telegram. Uh, I haven't sent this one yet, sir. What? Well, get weaving, Jeeves. Get them both off at once. 
Yes, sir. <coughs> Topley Towers might also seem the convenient place, sir, from which to send Mrs. Travers a telegram, informing her that we had tried, but regrettably failed, to steal the cow creamer. <laughs> Begun to loot the place. Look, he's got your creamer again. It's unbelievable. He must have followed us down. Bring him along to the library. I'll issue a warrant for his arrest. Put the ruffian away once and for all. Why? If he resists, shoot him, Spode. Don't hesitate. Oh, will you listen? What a lot of noise. By Bertie. When did you get here? I've only just arrived. You don't mean you know this man? Of course I know him, Daddy. Bertie is an old friend of mine. I told you he was coming. He snatches bags and makes daylight raids on antique shops. He's asked to make cow creamer. Look, he's got the blasted thing in his hand. You are an old silly, Daddy. Naturally, your silver would be the first thing Bertie would want to look for. Bertie is Mr. Travers' nephew. What? Tom Travers' nephew? So, of course, he's interested in silver, just like his uncle. Oh. Come along, Bertie. Anyway, it wasn't bag snatching, it was policeman's helmet stealing. How sweet of you to come, Bertie. But everything's sorted out. I thought I found him flirting with my cousin Stephanie, but she was only taking a fly out of her eye. You know, Bertie, sometimes I ask myself if I'm worthy of so rare a soul as Augustus. Oh, I wouldn't ask yourself rot like that. Of course you are. Now, when Gussie first met you, I said to myself, that's the bird, there she spouts. Uh, so, when's the wedding to be? September. Oh, well, I'd make it a bit earlier than that, if I were you. You think so? Oh, yes, definitely. Get it over and done with, then it's off your mind. No, you, you can't be married too soon to a chap like Gussie. Dear Bertie, always the soul of generosity. Worcester, I want a word with you. Ah, oh, hello. I have been talking to Sir Watkin Bassett. Oh, yes? We know why you are here. Oh, yes? Stop saying, oh, yes, you miserable worm, and listen to me. It is perfectly plain to us why you are here. Your uncle has sent you to steal the cow creamer for him. No! You needn't trouble to deny it. I found you with a thing in your hands already. Well, you're being watched, Worcester. Watched closely. There's going to be a police guard on the cow creamer. And if you're caught trying to steal it, I shall immediately beat you to a jelly. Oh. Or perhaps you think you will be clever enough to steal it without being detected. Listen to this. If that thing disappears at all, I shall know where it has gone, and I shall still beat you to a jelly. You will then go to prison. Have you got that clear? Oh, uh, definitely. Splendid. Right, to Aunt Dahlia. Um, I say, look here. This is absolutely impossible. Uh, not to say out of the question. Spode has already threatened, yours truly. Uh, sorry and all that. Oh, about the cow creamer, I mean. Anyway, there it is. Toodle Pip, your affectionate nephew, Bertie. Is it a code? Morning. Morning, Morning Constable Oak. No, it's a darn Bartholomew, you got. Get off! Stupid dog! Get off! Did 
did you do that for? You might have scared him out of his wits hurling yourself about like that. Poor old Bartholomew. We must caution you, Miss Stephanie. Did the ugly man nearly squash and flirt? I was proceeding along a public highway when the dog leaped at me in a violent manner. I was zerled from my bicycle. Oh, well, you shouldn't ride a bicycle. Bartholomew hates bicycles. I ride a bicycle, miss, because if I didn't, I would have to cover my beat on foot. Do you good. Get some of the fat off you. I will have to summon you once more, miss, for being in possession of a savage dog while it's not under proper control. Don't be an ass, Oates. You can't expect a dog to pass up a policeman on a bicycle. <laughs> it isn't human nature. I intend to fight this case to the House of Lords. And I shall call this gentleman as material witness. Oh, it's you, Bertie. Did you see what happened? Ringside seat. Well, stand by to be subpoenaed. Be that as it may, miss. We'll see about that. I'm just on my way to see Harold. We're engaged, you know. Oh, don't tell us so. Uncle Watkin mustn't know about it until he's been well sweetened. And who is this Harold? You know Harold. You were Oxford together. He's the curate here in the village. He talks a lot about you. Harold Pinker. Stinker Pinker. Great Scott. What have they got to? Oh, there you are, Bertie. Here's Harold. Stinker! Good heavens! Bertie, well, well, well! Oh, this wonderful what became of you. I was wondering only the other day what had happened to you. Good heavens. Well, well, well. Extraordinary thing. And here you are. Well, well, well. Absolutely amazing. Good heavens. Uh, is that the end? Bertie, we want you to do something for us. What? Harold, we can't talk here. Come up to Harold's room in the rectory. Fancy you being a full stinker. I'm so happy I could bite a grape. Or at least I should be. <laughs> Sit down, Bertie. You tell him, Harold. Well, what we thought was, you could steal Spotkin's new cow cream. <laughs> What's the point of that? Then Harold can get it back. Hand it over to Uncle Watkin and earn his undying gratitude. Oh, I see. I see. You want me to put on a black mask, break in through the window, snitch this objet down, and hand it over to Stinker? Oh, we hadn't thought of a mask. That's a very good idea, Bertie. And then I go off and do my stretch of Dartmoor. Oh, no, 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 you escape, of course. Then Harold comes back into the house, covered in blood. Uh, whose blood? Well, yours, we thought. There's got to be signs of a struggle to make it more interesting. Midnight tonight, OK? Don't you think it's a wonderful scheme, Bertie? Wonderful. Goodbye, Stiffy. But you don't mean you won't do it. I do mean I won't do it. Bertie, I think you're a pig. A pig? Maybe. But a shrewd, level-headed pig. A pig who was not born yesterday and has seen a thing or two. Oh, all right, Bertie. But I think you're jolly mean. I don't know how Madeline can be so fond of you. Now that she and Gussie have broken their engagement, you should show a little interest. She's such a lovely girl. Stiffy, you will understand that I'm implying nothing derogatory to your cousin when I say that there are certain females whom one is prepared to fight off with a blackjack. And it is to this group that your cousin Madeline belongs. Besides which, uh, Madeline tells me that she and Gussie are all hearts and flowers again anyway. Why have you gone all quiet? I'm just trying to straighten things out in my mind. You know, Bertie, if I told Madeline that Gussie really was trying to kiss me the other night... But he wasn't. Well, how do you know? I know Gussie. But if I did tell Madeline that, then it would be over for good between her and Gussie. And she'd probably start thinking about you again, Bertie. You know how fond of you she is. Now, look. However, as you're going to be so sweet and uh, going to help me and Harold by stealing that cow creamer thing, I suppose I shall have to stretch a point or two and not tell her. Stiffy. Midnight tonight, Bertie. Travers has arrived, sir. She has a matter of some importance she wishes to discuss with him. Ah! What oh, on my bosom? What do you mean by sending me those blasted silly telegrams? What? Oh, in Ray the cow cream evening. Well, as I said on earlier, one has tried, one has failed. One can do no more. Don't you try that dying duck in a thunderstorm stuff on me, young Bertie. You will get that cow creamer. No, no, you don't understand, Aunt Lady. I have tried. I've been threatened with a shotgun, and Roderick Spode says that if I try again, he'll beat me to a jelly. Yeah, go on. 
What do you mean, yes, go on? You wouldn't want your favorite nephew to be beaten to a jelly now, would you? Might be an improvement. Oh, just pull yourself together, Wooster, and retrieve that cow creamer. <laughs> Get him moving, Jeeves. <clears throat> Very good, Mrs. Travers. <sighs> this is getting beyond a joke, Jeeves. Aunt Dahlia wants me to pinch that blasted cow creamer. Stiffy wants me to pinch the blasted cow creamer. Do you want me to pinch the cow creamer, Jeeves? I think it would be most unwise, sir. Well, well, you're the only one. I explained to her why it was impossible, and all she could say was, well, get on with it. There may be a way of taking Roderick Spode and his threats of violence out of the picture altogether, sir. Really? Well, I don't see how. If one were to get the goods on Mr. Spode, as I believe the underworld phraseology has it, he might well be rendered a negligible force, sir. Well, yes, we haven't got anything on him. I don't even know where we'd look. I was thinking of the Junior Ganymede, sir. It is a club for gentlemen's personal gentlemen in Curzon Street. A club? It's been like whites. Of a similar nature, sir. The premises are more comfortable, however, and the members less Bolshevik. And you're a member? Oh, indeed, sir. And Mr. Spode's personal attendant is sure to be a member also, and would naturally have confided to the secretary a good deal of information concerning Mr. Spode for inclusion in the club book. The club book? Under Rule 11, each member is required to supply the club with full information regarding his employer's past and present. This not only provides entertaining reading, but also serves as a warning to those members who may be contemplating taking service with gentlemen who fall short of the ideal. Did you tell them about me? Oh, yes, sir. Well, everything. The night I came home from Pongo Twistleton's birthday party and mistook the standard lamp for a burglar. That episode is a particular favourite with members, sir. They like to have these things to read on wet afternoons. Uh, so what's your idea, then? Phone the secretary for information about Spode? The secretary is not permitted to dispense such highly confidential information over the telephone wires, sir. Oh. Right, all set, Jeeves? Yes, sir. Good. And for heaven's sake, hurry back. Indeed, sir. Um... Hello, Desmond. Here's some nice antics for you. Come on. Can you get up onto your nice rock? What? Oh, oh, that's a bit warm, isn't it? What a silly daddy. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Come in. Oh, sorry, sir. I just wanted to turn your bed down. Shall I come back later, sir? Hmm? No, 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 no. This curtain's stuck. I'll get Mr. Herbert to come up and see to it, sir. Well, you could wait it if I lifted you up. Oh, I don't know about that, sir. Well, it's Desmond, you see. The sun's on his tank. Well, I don't know, sir. No, no, just stand there. You see, it's the ring that's stuck, I think. Well, no, no, I can't quite reach, sir. Oh, well, we'll try once more. Well, I don't know as I can, sir. Of course you can. Come on. Gussie. Oh, hello, Madeline. I'm just... Uh... Gussie, how could you? Madeline? Of course, one can't guess. Proper gentlemen nowadays. Yeah. They're not what they were, sir. The one I've got at the moment insists on calling me by my first name. Oh, <laughs> oh one tries to be tactful, of course. One is simply swimming against the tide. I blame their parents. Yes, sir. How's yours now, please? Oh, really? Quite promising. I always suspected I could make something of you, and such is proving to be the case. Ah, but you want to see the book, don't you? I'm not considering another gentleman. This is quite another matter. The book for Mr. Jeeves, if you please. Well, I must say, mine is coming along very nicely, very nicely indeed. You remember I had to be quite severe with him about wearing a soft hat before Goodwood? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Good as gold, ma'am. Good as gold. Ah, thank you. I'm really quite concerned about this first name. I think they pick it up from the cinema. Now, why don't you try not answering when he calls you by the wrong name? I don't think I could carry that off. One doesn't like to hurt their feelings, does one? No, I don't <laughs>
anything I can do for you, Spurd? I wasn't thinking not to let dinner. Perhaps he wasn't hungry. I'm looking for him. Oh, right. Well, uh, any message if you should turn up? Tell him I'm going to break his neck. Break his neck. Right. And uh, if you should ask why? He knows why. Because he's a butterfly who toys with women's hearts and throws them aside like soiled gloves. Do butterflies do that? Are you trying to be funny? No, no, no. Good. Show yourself. I am not afraid. Do you bring a message for me from the other side? Let me out of here! They put the handles on the inside of those things. What were you doing in there? Hiding! Why you didn't look in the wardrobe? I can't imagine. I thought these dictators were meant to be thorough. Oh, stop complaining. Oh, what's all this about you throwing away Madeline's heart? It wasn't me, it was her. The housemaid was helping me with a curtain. Madeline came in and... Oh, what's the use? How are you on knotting sheets, Bertie? What do you mean, knotting sheets? They do it in books. You tie knots in them and then climb down out of the window. Oh, you're not afraid of spoon. I am. No, there's nothing for it but to start knotting sheets. You're not knotting my sheets. My life is at stake! I don't care. I'm, I'm declined to be a party to this craven scooting. Ah. Very well. I shall have to go off and hide somewhere till dawn when the milk train leaves. Goodbye, Bertie. You have disappointed me. Well, you have disappointed me. I thought you had guts. I have. And I didn't want one exposed fooling about with them. So, 12 o'clock midnight, you're waiting in the silver room, all right? Yes, yes, I see. In comes Bertie, you let him take the creamer thing, and then you biff him. Biff him? Yes, I see. He has agreed to this now, has he? He hasn't any choice. Uh... Oh, that should do it, I should think. Really? We want to see some blood, remember? All quiet, Oates? All quiet, Sir Watkins, sir. I'm turning in now. Remember, Oates, I'm relying on you. And keep a special eye on that cow creamer. Very good, Sir Watkins, sir. Well, what happened, Deeds? Has Spode got a secret? Indeed he has, sir. Uh... <laughs> Tell me all. I fear I cannot do that, sir. The rules of the club regarding the dissemination of such material are very rigid. Well, what was the better use of going, then? It's only the details of the matter that I'm precluded from mentioning, sir. I am perfectly at liberty to tell you that it would greatly lessen Mr. Spode's potentiality for evil were you to inform him that you know all about Eulalie. Eulalie? Eulalie, sir. You're sure you, you can't go any deeper into the subject? Quite sure, sir. Were I to do so, it is probable that my resignation would be called for. Well, we wouldn't want that, of course. Oh, all right, Chiefs, drive on. Eulalie, eh? Oi! Oh, I thought it was smooth. What do you mean, sneaking up on a fellow like that? This is my blasted room, thing, Doctor. What do you mean by mucking up my bed linen after I specifically forbade it? You have sheets of your own, and not those. How can I? Spode's sitting on my bed. Ah, well, I have good news for you on that front, Gussie. You need no longer fear, Spode. What do you mean, I need no longer fear, Spode? Talk sense, Wooster. I mean exactly what I say. Spode, qua menace, if qua is the word I'm after, is a thing of the past. I have learned something about him, Gussie, which he would not care to have generally known. What? Do not bother yourself with details, old fruit. Suffice it to say that I'm now in a position to put it across the fellow in no uncertain fashion. If he should attempt any rough stuff, I shall give him the works. Frank, knock! Oh, no. This may be the blighter now. Lock the door! Lock the door! That will not be necessary. Watch me deal with him, Gussie. It may amuse you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spode, what is it now? Spode, <laughs> what do you want? Well, since you ask. I would like to know why the devil you keep coming into my private apartment and then taking up space which I require for other purposes. 
I assume you have a room of your own. Why don't you get back there, you fat slob? And stay there. Did you call me a fat slob? I did. It's about time that some public-spirited person told you where to get off. The trouble with you, Spode, is that just because you've succeeded in inducing a, a handful of halfwits to disfigure the London scene by going about in black shorts, you think you're someone. You hear them shouting, Hail Spode, and you imagine it's the voice of the people. That is where you make your bloomer. What the voice of the people is actually saying is, look at that frightful ass Spode swanking about in footer bags. Did you ever in your life see such a perfect perisher? I shall attend to you later. On the contrary, Spode, I shall attend to you now. Spode, I know your secret. Hey! I know all about. Well, you know all about what? Ah, uh, you thumb all. Ah, uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, uh, you reach out. Oh, 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 How did you... how did you find out? How did you... well, I got... I have my methods, I suppose. Yeah, but you... you won't tell anyone, will you, Worcester? Uh, no, I won't. Oh, thank you, Worcester, thank you. Provided that we have no more of these extraordinary exhibitions on your part. Oh, of course, of course. I, I, I've been acting rather hastily. I forgot myself. It won't happen again. No, well, it better not. Good Lord, threatening a beta chat to a jelly. Oh, I know, I know. I was wrong. Oh, well, I shall, uh, I shall be very sharp on that sort of thing in future, I suppose. I understand. Yes. As a matter of fact, I've not been at all satisfied with your behaviour ever since I came to this house. You called me a miserable worm this morning. I'm sorry that, that I called you a miserable worm, Worcester. I, I spoke without thinking. Ah, yes, well, always think, Spode, always. Uh, right, well, that is all. You may withdraw. Good night, Spode. Good night, Worcester. And uh, say good night nicely to Mr. Finknottle. Oh, good night, Finknottle. <laughs> So what can, sir? It's time to be there somewhere, so what can, sir? Harold called the thief. What? Oh, well, well done, young man, well done. Who's that? Harold saw him come in and hit him with his cricket bat. 
What the devil are you doing, Spode? That fool of a policeman said there was some silver missing. Well, it, it was an intruder, Sir Watkins, sir. I very nearly apprehended him and... Mikhail Creamer. It's gone. It's gone. Well? Nothing, Sir Watkins, sir. You searched every room? Every room, every piece of luggage. Not a sign. You have trampled on the most elementary rules of hospitality, Sir Watkin. If you are now quite satisfied, I shall shake the dust of this place from my feet. Butterfield! Be so good as to call me a taxi. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Butterfield, for a most enjoyable stay. Thank you. Indeed, sir. Uh, I seem to have banished into thin air. Everything all right, old kith and kin? Everything wonderful, thank you, Bertie, dear. Yeah, we were just wondering who on earth could have stolen the cow creamer, weren't we, James? Indeed, sir. Nobody stole the cow creamer. It was confiscated for return to its rightful owner. Confiscated? Well, who confiscated it? I did. Then I gave it to Jeeves to hide for me. Have you got it, Jeeves? Good Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jeeves. Ta da, Bertie. Good. There is just one thing, Jeeves. I do wish you could give me the inside dope about you, Lynn. The rules of the junior Ganymede are extremely strict, sir. Jeeves, if you give me the lowdown, I will come on that world cruise of yours. No, sir. No, I could not betray a trust. Jeeves, I stand in awe. I'm almost tempted to come on that world cruise anyway as a reward for your resolution. That would be extremely generous, sir. I said almost, Jeeves. Yes, sir. The adverb did not escape me. 